right, there it is. Hopefully it's annealed so I can drill some pinholes and um, get the bevels marked in. Hey, this is Jason with 4W Knives. Uh, this is a part two video of a bull cutter build. Uh, if you haven't seen the first one, go back and watch it. I uh, did this with a steel ball bearing that was given to me and I had it forged out and annealed and uh, we'll see how far I can get along on this video. I uh, appreciate you tuning in. Alright, here I'm using a black magic marker or sharpie to uh, darken my edge. I'll come back with a scribe and mark a center line. This helps me keep my the edge of my blade centered and then I will go back in and draw the bevels uh, making sure that they're even and equal to one another. Now that I have my markings on the knife to guide me, I will grind a 45 degree edge down to my scribe line and slowly work my way up to the spine of the knife where I had marked in my bevel height. I will do this to get it within about a quarter thickness, sometimes a dime. I think I want a little thicker on this one. Prior to this quench, I preheated the oil to 140 degrees and also did three thermal cycles. Uh, had not uh, done 52100 yet, and of course it's mystery still, not 100% positive that it is 52100, so I did a test on some of it left over and broke it and the uh, uh, grain came out looking really good, so I stuck with uh, my normal heat treat. After heat treating, I start my finish grinding. Uh, I've kind of changed my steps on this uh, quite often, but right now uh, my method is I start off with an 80 grit, do most of the steel removal with it, and then I'll go to a 120 where I do the remainder of the steel removal. Uh, after that, I transition to some of the cleanup belts, which when we get to those, I'll, I'll talk about them briefly.
as I'm finishing up with the 120 here, the next belt will be a green belt, which is a Trizac belt. I start with a uh, 220 grit, and then I move to a 400, and then the big blue belt, a greenish blue, will be a conditioning belt, and I'll use it, and then the final belt I'll use in the mix is an 800 grit Trizac belt. Um, I put a little bit of each clip in here, so you could see the shine of the knife developing as I go up in grit. Uh, side note, you do have to be pretty careful with these. If you leave it on one spot too soon, you will burn the steel pretty quick. Okay, I've moved into the house. I thought I'd show you guys my etching system um, or procedure, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's not a how-to, it's just how I do it. There are professional methods, there are professional uh, emblems and uh, machines and everything that could be a lot better than this. This is just how I do it. I saw it on YouTube myself, picked it up, and it's, I've just kind of stuck doing it this direction. It uh, starts with is I've got these little uh, vinyl stencils that I purchased from a place in town. Uh, it's just got my uh, logo cut out inside of it. Uh, they make them pretty cheap for me. And I mean, they're not ideal, but they work pretty good. Uh, I have two leads, positive and a negative. I'll show you how that works here in a minute. And nine volt battery. This one is a fresh one and then some electrical tape. So I'll just do the electrical tape around the outside edge just to make sure nothing bleeds over and make sure it's pressed down really good. So I'll do that and I'll show you. So it looks something like this right before I etch it. I've got it pressed down really good around the edges to add some insulation. And uh, anywhere uh, the uh, negative lead touches will uh, react to the steel. Don't know why it works, it works. Uh, I have salt water, which is just water with salt in it. And let's see, is that it? Oh, cotton ball and a cotton ball. And I'll show you a little bit of how that works. Uh, and then we'll see how it looks. I'm gonna push this away just a little bit. And up, yeah. Negative to negative. Positive to positives. Positive hooks up to the knife or to the steel that you're etching. And then the negative, I'll just stick the cotton ball in there leaving a little bit of an edge sticking out. Tap it, get it pretty wet. You're gonna apply it to the logo and you'll hear a sizzle. And I just rock it back and forth, making sure that I get good contact and let it work for a little bit. And I'll do this up and down the logo until I feel like it's deep enough, dark enough. As I've stated, this, I don't even know if this is, I mean, I don't see any way that it could hurt you, but I'm not saying it's a smart thing to do or the easy way to do it. I, this is just how I've done it. I've seen other videos where they did it. And like a lot of things in my life, if I like something, I copy it. 
And that's kind of what I've done. I've copied it. And it just works pretty good. Once I get it etched here, and I'll, I'll go around it for just a little bit. Once I get it, I will then do my hand sanding. Uh, if I leave it overnight after I've done it without hand sanding, uh, rust will develop around where I've done that. I imagine the salt water continues to react to the steel or something like that. Again, I'm, I don't know. This stuff fascinates me, but I'm not smart enough to understand it at, at high levels. So, See if you can see that. Got a pretty decent clear edge. I'll have to go in and when I hand sand, it'll get rid of some of these little things that the tape laid on there. But uh, overall, I think it looks pretty sharp and does a pretty good job. And I have a way of marking my knives. I am uh, going to end this video here. Uh, it's just taking too long. I, I apologize if I didn't get enough. Uh, uh, material in on this one, but uh, I'll pick up with handle material, uh, shaping the handle and everything. Haven't decided if I'm going to do an etch on the knife yet or not. Uh, I'll, well, I guess we'll wait and see for the next video, but I appreciate it and uh, have a good one.